Hey, it's Grabby Peep Susanna here today for Ellie's Studio on release day, and I am sharing with you the first of several layouts that I created using this November kit and the digital cut files. So there are four files included in the digital cut file, which you get for free if you are a subscriber. Otherwise, you do have to pay, um, and I have used three of the four files here. So the first file I'm using is the tree. I printed that out large, or cut it out large, and I actually created an outline for it, but I don't end up using that. And then these are the banners. So originally in the banners you have a heart and a star in them and they're a little bit longer but I sized it to fit what I wanted and I'm going to use these banners. I've cut them out of the um, the Christmas Basics pattern paper stack and I am going to make a Christmas tree out of that. So I have used the other Christmas paper stack um, that you could have bought at the December document December release and uh, that is obviously the, going to be the stump, the base of the tree. And then on that I'm going to layer up these banners to create my tree. Um, and I will warn you that this is a longer than normal process video for me for a single page video. Um, it takes time to decorate a tree and so you will see it takes time for me to do this. Um, it's a little bit of a laborious process, but it actually it is so worth the time. Um, so I have used different colors. Um, I've got pink and uh, multiple shades and patterns of green, and I'm going to alternate the layers of that to create the, um, the foliage of the tree, sort of the depth of the tree. I had toyed with the idea of inking the edges um, and you could absolutely do that. And in fact, I encourage you to do that. I did not just because I wanted the patterns of the pattern paper to shine. Um, I also am a very impatient scrapper. I know that of myself and I know that I would not have let them sit long enough to let the ink dry and it would have just ended up being a muddy mess. So for time's sake, I'm going to skip me literally putting down a layer of adhesive and then um, sticking all of those down. Uh, I just skipped through all of that because originally this video was 33 minutes long, I want to say. And so now I am methodically um, and erroneously, uh, you will see, um, going to just follow the outline of that tree and I'm going to trim off all of the little edges. What I don't remember and you'll see when I get to the end is that I want those little edges hanging over the edge of each layer of the tree. Um, I hope that makes sense uh, because that's still part of the layer of foliage, right? Um, you'll see what I mean. So see how I trimmed off the, it, it fits perfectly and right there I'm like, oh no, I don't want to do that. I wanted those banner pieces. So fortunately I had um, some leftovers and I can remediate my error there. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and fix that as well as I move further up the tree. And that, my friends, is a way that you can make that tree into a much more um, dynamic tree so that you have the layers of the tree. So once I finish this, what I'm going to do next is I have some red baker's twine and I, every tree has to have lights, right, and ornaments. So I'm going to put the lights and the ornaments on. So I'm going to use my baker's twine and I'm going to string some lights on the tree. Um, and actually there aren't going to be ornaments on it just because there's enough color in the pattern papers that to add ornaments to it would have been a little too much. Now, um, mm -hmm. part of the kit this month, you can get some acrylic Christmas light bulbs. I absolutely could have put those on there too. The Christmas light bulbs are colors. Um, and I, as a scrapper, don't tend to, on most of my layouts, put a lot of color in my layouts. I prefer my layouts to be um, I usually stick to three sometimes four colors in a color palette and um, to add the acrylic light bulbs while I really loved them to have purple um, and orange and pink uh, and blue <laughs> in addition to all of these shades of green um, was just going to be more than my little brain could handle. So I am not going to use the acrylic uh, light bulbs, but if that is your jam, then I highly encourage you to purchase those and go for that. Um, instead, I'm going to use the digital cut file of the light bulbs and I am going to cut them two-tone. I'm going to use uh, one of the striped pattern papers and then I'm going to use some uh, gold glitter cardstock that I have um, and multi-layer the light bulbs. 
So this is a, a little bit of a, um, a process. I am going to figure out halfway through that if I lose tape all the way down to hold the, <laughs> the baker's twine that it won't slide on me all the time. Uh, but it's going to take me a while to get there. Um, and I'm going to string the lights. And just as sometimes stringing the lights on a Christmas tree, if you um, string them every year, instead of buying, buying a pre-lit tree, uh, <laughs> it takes some time, right? Um, and so that's what, this is gonna take a couple of tries um, to get the, the quantity of lighting correct. See, I look at that and I'm like, nope, don't like it, need more. <laughs> and um, I'm gonna go ahead and go off and put a little bit more on. Uh, so I liked the red. I went with the red baker's twine because I like the way that that provides contrast to the tree. Um, and so I am going to go through that. Um, and again, about here, I think, is where I decide that, yeah, using more tape and let me go ahead and rip some extra tape and just leave it on my hand um, is going to be a good idea. I tend to not do that. I do notice that a lot of um, people in process videos will put like their letter stickers on their skin. I have a latex sensitivity and I have found that some of these things I don't always know um, how my skin is going to react to the adhesive in those things. Um, there is a fair amount of latex in adhesive and um, I don't break out, I just get really itchy. Um, well, I get my skin gets red. Uh, and so I have not used this, I'm gonna call it rippable, I called it terrible before, but rippable um, double-sided tape from Thermoweb from Gina K. I absolutely love it, um, but it's taken me a little while to get brave enough to actually stick it on my skin to realize that um, I, can, I can do that and it doesn't bother or irritate my skin. So you can see where I am using that double-sided tape to hold the baker's twine down so that I can light my tree um, and then after that I'm going to need some light bulbs and I've already explained to you that those are um, I'm going to choose to use the cut files but absolutely if you have the acrylic bulbs those would be great there as well. So a little bit about these pictures. So the title of this layout is um, Boxing Day. On Boxing Day, it is tradition, my mom is English, for us to go for a walk. And we had done that. Um, but we then decided at spur of the moment to actually stay uh, at a hotel about... I want to say it's an hour and a half from here, maybe an hour um, from where we live. And so this was just about... Um, hopefully what might be a new tradition. Um, so continuing the Boxing Day walk, but maybe staying at the Omni uh, Resort, Wintergreen Resort, Homestead, sorry, not Wintergreen, Homestead Resort. Um, and so it is a photo of my husband and I at their giant Christmas tree, which is why I made this Christmas tree. And then a view of my family, minus myself, because I was taking the picture, walking down this giant hallway with the tree um, in view as well. It is quite an amazing tree and it is a live tree. Uh, and that is what prompted me to make this tree to put beside the layout. Um, and I wanted that huge magnitude of the tree because it is such a giant tree. Um, and the tree also has red ribbon that comes down it, the real tree. And that's uh, so sort of while I chose to do my lighting going down, I mean, zigzagging, it, it still uses that same red that is in the photos there. So I'm using liquid adhesive to get these bulbs stuck down. Um, they take a little bit of pressure to hold them down because I am sticking them on to the baker's twine. Um, and so I've run out of bulbs, but I will go ahead and um, cut myself some more and then I will go ahead and adhere them. But I'm going to skip through that part because literally um, this video was so long if I didn't do that. So now I'm going to build the rest of the layout, set out the rest of the scene here. Um, I have those two three by four photos and then that is a red chipboard star uh, and that comes from the... Um, chipboard stickers, the Very Merry Chipboard stickers. I use quite a few of those in the layout. I like depth to my pages and I like the way that the chipboard does that. I have intentionally chosen the yellow because usually you have a star at the top of the tree, right? And it's either gonna be gold or silver or um, so the yellow served as the gold. I'm going to back the chipboard with um, that die cut from the kit itself. And then um, 
I feel like I need to use yellow somewhere else in the layout because otherwise that yellow star just sort of stands out in like a sore thumb. So I want to have a spot for journaling above the photos there. What I'm pointing out to you there is that the green in that four by six card does not match the green in those papers. And so I don't like that. That bothers me. Um, so I'm going to go with that documented four by six journaling tag. I have used a lot of those in my scrapping lately. So if you haven't already um, purchased or added to your kit subscription, I definitely recommend those. Um, so now I'm going through, I used actually a lot of the die cuts from the kit on this particular layout. Um, I had that gray, it says the story of today, and then the little pink um, banner says, these are the moments I want to remember. Those are dies from the kit. So I am wanting to put some more color, a little bit more color on that right hand side. And so I'm looking for cards to layer in there for that added color. Um, and I know that the pattern papers that I have don't include yellow, so I'm looking for a way to get a little bit more yellow in there. For some reason, I cut out this red one um, and I struggled with how I was gonna get more layers of color on that right-hand side. And I think I just thought um, for now that I would pull in some other colors. The problem is, is I've got a lot of boxy elements on the right-hand side already. And then with that variation of color in the tree, putting more and more of those smaller elements elements of color. Um, just it, it took your eye away from the tree um, and it became too busy. So I really liked that piece of starred paper uh, from the paper stack and so I am going to go with that and I like the way that that almost creates sort of a door or a window beside the tree and it grounds the rest of the layout there. Um, I've already got a lot of double-sided tape that's holding this down but I'm going to just use some more um, as an easy way of just getting this stuck down. When I have large elements like this I really like to use this double-sided tape and I like the Gina K because it is rippable. It is very easy easily rippable. I don't need to have my scissors um, and it has a really nice strong bond and hold when I adhere things down, especially when you've got like the baker's twine on the back side that tends to um, not always allow your adhesive to be as strong. So I'm just going to take the, uh, allow the adhesive, take the backing off of that so that I can stick that down. I'm looking for my tweezers is what I'm doing there um, so that because this stuff um, really sometimes you, you, it's harder to get off. So trim off the bottom there so that that stick fix on the page and now I know my background and it's just time to work on those finer details. It's kind of like when you have ornaments when you're decorating your tree right you get the base ornaments on and then it's filling all the little holes in with all of the right precision. Um, there's a science behind this. So this is where I actually pull out that yellow label um, and it says date on it. Uh, I thought I would use the black one as well for some contrast, um, but decide to put that away. And I want ultimately three spots of yellow so that you have that visual triangle that draws your eye through the page and creates balance really through the page. Um, and I kind of struggled with the pictures and where to put these bits of yellow and how I was going to get these bits of yellow in there. And ultimately I like it down at the bottom of the photo there. Um, and then I remember that I have these, these are the autumn die cut tabs. I absolutely love these. Uh, if you don't have a manual die cut machine and don't already own the manual dies, these are a great way of getting um, some pre-colored tabs for your creations. So there are my three spots of yellow, that tab up the top, the dated thing is frame. It really is a frame for that sentiment down the bottom there. And then the yellow star on the top of the page. And I like the way that it guides your eye from the tree to the journaling down through the photos and the title um, and then back up to the tree. So the important visual parts of that layout. Um, because for me, this is really about storytelling. Yes, I like the art of scrapbooking, um, but ultimately I wanna make sure that I document why or what the occasion is um, that I am got the pictures of. So these are some more of those uh, merry, very merry chipboard stickers that I was talking about. Again, just to add a little bit of color and contrast on that right hand side, I've got a lot of color on the left and I kind of want to 
even that out to the right hand side so I've got a few of those. I really loved these yellow stars from the uh, acrylic Christmas trees and I thought that that might put a sprinkle more yellow into the page but I am a texture person so I've already got a ton of texture in that tree between the banners and the glitter and the chipboard stickers as well as the baker's twine and so I decide I'm going to leave the acrylic out because it's just too much. You could have done it. Um, that might work for you but me personally it didn't work. So these are the uh, Christmas tab stamps and I'm going to use that for the tab up the top that says magical and then at the bottom um, to stamp in just family time. I just like those little sort of small details in my layouts um, and be sure to check back later this week for another process video where I'm going to um, show you more than one way to use these uh, just some different ways of being able to use this Christmas tab stamp it is an awesome stamp set if you don't have it I def or in your box in your cart already I definitely recommend you put that in there so again putting a little of more green up the top to balance that out um, and pull some of that green that's in the tree up to the top and then I want to finish this off with the title and I'm going to use the uh, Jane tile alphabet cardstock stickers these are awesome um, you could color them yourself hopefully they'll be coming in different colors I have put b-o-i-n-g and I've intentionally left x out because it means flipping it over, um, but I want to make sure that I can get day fitting in there before I go through the effort of putting the X in. Those of you who know my title shuffle know that <laughs> if I put it all down, it's going to come up. So I figure if I put part of it down to just make sure that it fits, that I'll be okay. And that, my friends, wraps up my um, Boxing Day layout with a large die cut Christmas tree or manually die cut not manually, electronic die cut Christmas tree um, using the new goodies, November goodies. So um, be sure to check out the descri description box down below for all of the links to the goodies that I have used today. Come back later this week to um, see how I use the Christmas tab stamp. And if you have any questions about subscribing or anything else LE Studio, please don't hesitate to leave them in the box down below. Enjoy the close-ups. I hope you're doing well. I'll talk to you soon. Come back again soon. Take care.